Hi and welcome to another 3-point edit tutorial. This time I'm going to look at the fireball effect that I created recently using 2.8's brilliant EV render engine. I'm really enjoying it so far. As you can see, there's a lot of glowing going on and there's a lot of transparency, but what there isn't is volumetrics. I'm trying an old school hack today to fake volumetrics for display. So what I start with is an object that I will be emitting as a particle. And this object has a bunch of displacement with uh, Blender Clouds as the displacement type. And if we look at the modifier, you can see that there's a lot of subdivision going on, or a little bit of subdivision, so I don't stress the machine. And my texture is just a boring old cloud. You can change the amount of strength that's occurring there to get more or less lumpy effect and you can add more subdivision to get rid of the jagged edges. Now the other thing that's going on is that throughout the course of my animation I'm using a driver to constantly update the position uh, of the object so that it moves through global space. And that affects my texture because I'm using global texture coordinates and when that object moves you can see it climbing up through the through the frame, it's distorting and changing. Now when I use a particle emission, I'm not going to move the particles, but this will result in a crawling effect over the surface of the particle. So if we dispense with that for a moment and have a look at our particle emitter, if I hit play, you can see that the particles are rolling and distorting over time, but they're not moving anywhere. So they're inheriting the um, effect from that original particle object. The other thing I'm doing is applying a material to this object. Let me turn on overlays. And I'm using its layer weight to infer a different look. Let me turn on rendering. Now we can't see it here because our um, lighting is providing most of the surface attributes. But if we go to this mode, you can see the, the facing and Fresnel effect on the surface. What I'm using that layer effect or layer weight node and its Fresnel or facing values, I'm using that to actually modify a mix shader that is its factor of mix between a diffuse shader to show off the lighting on its surface and a transparent shader to give me this see-throughness you can see behind there. So depending on whether the object is pointing towards me, I can infer more or less transparency. So it gives me a simulated version of depth through a volumetric. And if we go back and look at the particle object, you can see that we have this simulated smoke density from all of the particle surfaces. If we turn off the, uh, the mixing, you can see there's no more transparency happening, or not much, but also you get more of a surface effect, which I don't really want. I want it to look a little bit transparent. So Now if you wanted um, greater fidelity in your clouds, you would simply change the um, value of displacement or subdivision. So if we change the amount of subdivision of our object and then we increase the strength you can see we can change the effect of the smoke so we can have it more or less lumpy based on these values that we give to the particle that we're displacing. The way that I've changed the Fresnel that emits from the layer weight node gives it this sort of nice fall off effect if I trim these values, you can see that an apparent change in density, but what I'm most concerned about is this fall off around the edge. And that's to do with this black value. So I can get more of a tune effect like this. Or if I change the baseline here, so the way that it interpolates between these values, if I change that to something like constant, and then change this value, you can get more of a tune effect for your, for your smoke. You can see that we get much more of a broken up edge. 
which looks nice, might be what you're after. More dense or less dense. It's a very fine line between density and fall off. So you can have wispy smoke, or you can have much thicker smoke. And I was using B spline, because I like the way it falls off. There we are. If you want to change the nature of the style of the of the fill or the smoke surface, I tried modifying its colour. So you get more of a pronounced outline around these blobby bits. Modifying the divide value will g again give me more of a tune effect because I'm sharpening up these the contrast of the effect. That's covered the particle and it's covered the um, particle emission material. Now another thing I'm, I'm doing here is emitting from my fireball object. So let's have a quick look at that. If we go back to the first frame, it's simply a sphere emitting some particles. In this case I'm emitting 300 particles for the entire duration of my animation from frame 1 to 250 and I'm making sure that the lifetime exceeds the duration of my animation. And in this case it's 300 frames so that the um, fall off of the size of the particles over time exceeds the length of the animation so that at the end they still exist on screen but if I go past that beyond 300 you can see that they begin to fall off and reduce in size over time. That's because I'm modifying the size or scale of the particle objects as, as a texture effect. So if we go all the way down to texture, I have a texture slot with a ramp. If I click on this button and go to my texture slots, my initial texture is a blend type, which is just a simple ramp, and then I've modified it so that it's a linear only and it's a occurring in the horizontal axis, if we change it to the vertical axis it actually changes their size. If I admit this you'll see that they get larger in the middle of the animation and smaller on each end. So I want to modify them in a different axis, that is I want each one of them to grow and shrink in the same location instead of being emitted in their, in their size, small, big, rest in the middle for a bit and then they'll start to go back down small again. You can see they're getting smaller and smaller. Now that's a function of the way that I've changed the gradient. If we have a quick look at that you'll notice that size is set to 1. I, if I don't want it to influence it, influence at all it will be taking the initial size of the particle which I don't want. So let's undo that. We'll scroll back down. I'm of course mapping these to its strand particle coordinates and the colors I've changed the ramp so that now I am starting off very small immediately jumping up to a gray value holding at a slightly larger gray value and then dropping off to small again or black over time using my favorite B-spline interpolation. I should also mention that the particles are being emitted in a static space on the screen so as my object moves across screen, my little fireball sphere, the particles are being left behind in its wake. Yet they have no normal uh, speed or any other kind of object velocity. And down here in the physics or field weights, I've turned off gravity so that they are also not falling. If I had a little bit of gravity, and play through, they would fall down out of frame. Now if you want a rising smoke column that might be useful to change. Of course if you want wind you could also apply some other effectors. But in this case I just wanted a trail of smoke being left behind after my fireball. One other thing I should note about my fireball is that it has some material as well. It has, whoops, let's see, rendered it has a black body emission type set down at 1300 degrees and I'm using uh, another multiplier based on my Fresnel 
to give me some fall off around the edges just to make it a bit more dramatic. If it didn't do that, it would just be a solid ball of energy. Uh, but I want to give some indication of surface. You could invert that as well. You can use the multiplier to punch up more light into your scene, like this. Like dimming an incandescent filament. Whoosh. But, unlike cycles, Eevee does not use the light emitted from an object to light the scene. For that, you can only use lamps. And that's why, hiding behind the back of this object, is a lamp. It's actually parented, parented to this object. The, lamp is following my object through the scene. You can see it moving there. That's why the smoke that follows the object is being illuminated by this lamp, not by my object at all. See that white effect? That is not from my fireball, that is from this parented lamp. I do have to be careful that the lamp does not exist inside the fireball because then the fireball would occlude the light from the lamp entirely. But as it is, it's not casting any shadows in the scene. But you can see that depending on where you look at it, it gives you a different amount of density to the smoke. And you may notice that there's a slight red redness as well underneath the smoke. I'll go back to solid. Yes. If we zoom out, you'll notice there's another lamp, an area lamp underneath. And guess what? The area lamp is providing the um, backside illumination to my smoke. In this case I thought maybe it's over a volcano, maybe there's a ground fire, something else is happening below here. So my lamp is actually a red area lamp giving me 10 watts, 10 watts of illumination. The other lamp, the spot lamp that's parented to my sphere, is giving me 30 watts at this sort of brown muddy colour that I felt that was close to the um, yellow illumination. But at that energy it provides an almost white light. If we go up to rendered mode. Let's try changing this background so it's a bit more apparent. Bring that right down. You can see the red that's being illuminated from my fake ground and the white that's being illuminated from my fireball. Well, not from my fireball, from the light parented to the fireball. Now the amount of glow is dependent on the EV style, but currently the EV render engine has bloom turned on. If I turn bloom off, oh, it all gets rather boring. This is the effect, my smoke effect without the sexy bloom, red underneath, white on top, and we fill in all these rough edges with some nice bloom. You don't use the scene colouring for the bloom, you actually apply a white colour and then that's multiplied with the actual colour in the scene. And if we use white, it's, uh, it is only multiplying by the colours that you see here, so you won't get any sort of colour tint. But if I made it a blue, then you get a blue glow, which is probably not what you're after, but depending on the nature of the lighting, it may be the sort of thing that you're looking for. I left mine as white. The intensity I've turned up and the clamp is up quite high too, so just everything gets a glow. Of course, I'm using the colour management set to Filmic at reasonably high contrast. I hope you enjoyed this excursion into fake volumetrics using Eevee. Taken a little bit further, you can actually produce something that looks like a volcano. And with some of my favourite electric hair, you can get some lightning and volcano action happening. <laughs> <laughs>